Hey guys and welcome to Toby Talks Tech. My name is Toby and today we're going to talk some tech. Now I'm pretty sure you've seen this gimbal before, came out around about the end of last year. This is the Xeon Crane 3 Lab, which is one of the top range stabilizers right now on the market for mirrorless and DSLR cameras. Now right here I do have to pause a moment and give a big thank you and shout out to Xeon for sending this to me. And the reason I keep announcing what gets sent to me and what I paid for with my own money is because even though I have an agreement with those companies that I will always give my honest opinion as unbiased as I possibly can. I don't do advertorials or promote something for the sake of promoting it. It's just not my thing. Now the reason I always like to announce that very upfront is because no matter how objective you try to be, if you didn't put down your own dollars for something, it might color your judgment a little bit and I do want you guys to be aware of that. So this got sent to me by Xeon. Thank you very much for that. Now the Xeon Crane 3 Lab comes in three distinct flavors. There's the basic package which costs you 800 and 99 US dollars, which is really just the body, like basically what you see right here. Then there's the creator pack, which costs you $1,199. And that adds a follow focus and zoom controls, an attachment to mount your mobile phone to use it as an external monitor, another quick mounting plate for your camera, as well as a strap and a telescopic monopound with two additional adapters. So you can mount all of that. On top of that, you can also get the master package, which costs $1,299 US dollars. And that adds a backpack to put all of that in. Now, the one that Xeon sent me is the creator pack. So I do have to follow focus and zoom controls, but they're not attached to the camera. And I'll talk about why a little bit later in this video. Now, the Xeon Crane 3 Lab actually has some pretty steep competition out there on the market, namely the DJI Ronin S, which costs $599. So it's $300 cheaper than even the basic package. And then there's also the Moza 2 Air, which I do want to try out pretty soon as well, which comes in at around about $550. US dollars. So in this video, I first want to talk about the specs of the Xeon Crane 3 Lab, then show you the results of a little bit of a field test where I actually went out with the device and tested it out in a more real life situation. And finally, I want to talk a little bit about what I did like and what I didn't like so much about the device. As always, you will find timestamps up here and down in the video description so you can jump to anywhere that you want. But now enough talking, let's jump right into the specs. The Xeon Crane 3 Lab is, no surprise, a camera stabilizer and its load capacity is 1.1 to 9.92 pounds, which is about 0.5 to 4.5 kilos. The gimbal itself weighs in at 3.86 pounds, which is around about 1.75 kilos. And once you add your camera, like a Canon 5D or God forbid a 1DX and a 24 to 70 or a small cinema camera, you are in for a little bit of a workout. Now, one of the things that is pretty unique to the Crane 3 Lab is actually this angled grip here. So it's not like a stick like for the Ronin S or the Moza Air or some of the other gimbals. It's got an angle to it. And what this allows you to do is if you're holding the gimbal like this, where you wrap up the legs and you kind of grab it on the handle, it's actually really easy to get those low shots just because you can actually hang it and kind of move it across the ground and then kind of pull it up for those really nice rising gimbal shots that you can get. All of the different gimbal modes from lock to pan follow, follow, point of view, vortex mode are all accessible via physical buttons on the device itself. On the side, you will find a follow focus wheel and behind that an integrated joystick that you can use to actually aim your camera. The grip handle on the Xeon Crane includes an OLED screen as well as camera control. So you can actually adjust your aperture, your shutter speed, your ISO directly from the handle of the grip. And it gives you access to all of the settings of the Crane 3 Lab itself. Another feature you'll notice on the Crane 3 Lab, especially when you're balancing out your camera, is that each axis has an individual lock, so you can lock down individual axes. That does make it a whole lot easier to balance out, so you don't have to worry about the whole thing being unstable and trying to calibrate everything at once. You can kind of focus on one axis at a time. On the side, just above the focus wheel, you find a little attachment where you can get a mobile phone attachment, so you can kind of clip that right in there, and then use your mobile phone as an external monitor via wireless image transmission in full 1080p. Do note though that this adapter is not included in the basic package for the Xeon Crane 3 Lab. Finally, battery life is rated at seven and a half hours and it takes you around about four hours to get a full charge. Next, with all of the stats out of the way, let's look at how the Crane 3 Lab actually performs out in the field. For that, I took the device out to South Bank in Melbourne on a surprisingly warm winter day, set it up, which took me around about five to 10 minutes, and then I was ready to hit the road and get some footage. Now, before we jump into that B-roll sequence, I do wanna mention that 
in the footage that I shot, I did notice a lot of micro jitter and I'm not sure whether that was me being unfamiliar with how to best use this device. I do have a few other gimbals like a Crane M, I've got a Smooth Q, I've got the Osmo Pocket Osmo Pro, but I've never actually had a fully you know, fully professional DSLR camera stabilizer. So I'm not sure whether I wasn't walking smoothly enough, but I did notice that a lot of the shots had a bit of micro jitter. Now that was super easy to knock out just with a little bit of warp stabilizer in Premiere Pro. And I'm pretty sure you can do the same thing in DaVinci Resolve, HitFilm, any other program that you might be using. But now enough talking, here's the B-roll sequence. So judge for yourself, all of the footage is shot on the Canon 5D with a 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens using the Xeon Crane 3 Lab. Now, hopefully that gave you a good idea of the sort of shots that you can create with the Xeon Crane 3 Lab. And let's talk a little bit about what I really like about this device and what I don't like as much and then dive a little bit into some recommendations. So do stick around to the end. First off, build quality. The Xeon Crane 3 Lab is a pretty solid device. It's heavy, but it is pretty well built. Now, most of the parts are plastic or rubber. Like even this handle here is kind of plastic, which initially worried me a little bit because of the load. You're like, ah, oh. but when you're using it, it does feel nice and sturdy. The axes themselves are aluminium, so that is nice and sturdy up top, but it is generally a pretty solid device. And you will notice that with a heavy camera, that is quite a workout. Like the whole thing together with the camera and the gimbal is probably around about seven, eight pounds. Like it's about three, three and a half kilos. It gets pretty heavy. And if you're carrying it around, especially because of the way you're carrying it, because you're kind of holding it like this, a lot of the weight actually rests on this arm and that one tends to get tired. I was walking around for about an hour, an hour and a half in Melbourne on South Bank and it was getting pretty tiring. But overall, like it doesn't feel flimsy at all. It's a really solid device and I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the build quality. Now, in terms of setup, I have struggled with other gimbals before. Well, can be pretty tricky to set up, especially if you're new to it all. Now these locking nuts, especially on the individual axes and having that on all three axes, like your tilt, pan and roll is absolutely amazing. Makes setting up so much easier because you can kind of isolate a single axis, balance out for that and then unlock another one and then do that. So that makes it a whole lot easier. Really like that feature. In terms of the balancing, I do like that all of the axes have little markers so you can kind of take down notes of which setup fit with which setting for those different axes. Now I find the sliders themselves pretty stiff, like you have to push pretty hard sometimes to just move it a little bit and by the time you moved it a little bit too much. Rather than having locking bolts, I'd much rather have like a wheel where you can actually just twist it and it slides one side or the other. That would make it so much easier. But you know, this is, this is what we have. It works, but you know, it's not the best. I wish it was just a bit smoother and easier to get it all balanced out. Using the Crane 3 Lab out in the field, especially switching between all of the different modes was really nice and easy, mainly because every single mode has a distinct physical button on the Crane 3, like the lock, pan, follow, follow, point of view, like all of them are physically accessible, which makes it a whole lot easier than some of the other gimbals that I own, like the Crane M. Sorry, Zion, I know I'm using you. I'm, I hope you're not too mad. But for that, you actually have one button and you gotta remember, I pressed it twice to switch into this mode and twice to go into that once into, I, I can't, in my mind, I can't juggle that. I need physical buttons. The Crane 3 Lab delivers that, makes it really easy to switch between the different modes. The other thing I actually really like is the handle itself. Most other gimbals, like the DJI Ronin S, Moza Air and other ones, are straight. So you kind of hold them like this. This also makes it a bit difficult if you want the underslung shot, like if you want those kind of shots. Now, 
the distinguishing feature of the crank through lap is this angled handle and it actually makes that part really easy you just hold it like this and you can get really close to the floor and you can kind of come up forget those really nice lifting up gimbal shots so for that i really like the handle i also like all of the controls in the back it's really nice and easy to adjust your shutter your aperture and your iso right from the back or adjust the sensitivity of the motor how fast it swings around and it's all accessible right at your thumb battery life i also found pretty impressive i'm actually still running on the same charge that i used when i was out in melbourne didn't feel the need to recharge i think i still got yeah still got about 40 50 percent on the battery it does take a little bit to charge the batteries but then with seven and a half hours which is round about what i'm getting it, it'll, it'll last you longer than your arms will just because it's gonna get too heavy. But if you're taking this out for a weekend shoot, you're probably good with just one set of batteries. Another thing I really appreciate is that if you're looking at the back, if I turn it around, you can see that this axis here, the header for that is set up, it's a bit lower. So you can actually see the LCD screen on this camera. That means that if you don't have a mobile phone as an external monitor or you have issues setting it up, which I did and I'll get to that in a little bit, you can still see the screen of your camera. So I was still able in Melbourne when I had issues setting my phone up for image transmission, I could still use it, walk around and I get all of the shots and I could see what's going on. So I really appreciate that. So that's kind of all of the things I really liked about the device. Let's talk about some of the things that personally I didn't like all that much or that I would have just, just done differently. Now, I did talk about the stiffness of the axes a little bit already, especially when you're balancing, that can be a bit frustrating, though the locking of the axes does help a lot. If that wasn't in place and you still had that stiffness, that would be a bit of a challenge. The other thing I had as well is that on the front, there are a lot of screws, especially with the mounting plates and some of the other attachments that you can get, where the screws kind of get a bit too close to each other, even when you're trying to lock it in place, they're kind of like, you feel like you can't twist things anymore because they kind of get gridlocked. It's, it's a bit too tight around this area with some of the screws. And this is also one of the reasons why I don't actually have the follow focus and zoom on this camera. These are the two little motors here. They kind of mount on the side of your lens and then you can control them with the follow focus wheel and the rocker in the handle. And they then control the zoom and the focus of your camera. And there are a number of reasons why I didn't end up using these ones much. First off, setup cost. It's actually, there's a lot of, there's a lot of bits and pieces that you need to actually make this happen. There's additional cables and things you need to tie around your lens. And then there's additional mounting that needs to happen. And with all of the screws, it does get a little bit too tight there. So it wasn't an, it wasn't a slide on and ready. The other thing as well, the moment you touch anything on this lens, like you're attaching new motors to it, or even something like, you know, like another cable, like it shifts the weight of the device and it'll go out of balance and you have to rebalance it. And then if you say, ah, oh, I don't need the follow focus, follow zoom anymore, take it off, weight shifts, you got to rebalance it. So be aware that any change, even a lens hood, like can throw this out. Although the motor of the device is pretty strong and can push through a lot of the imbalances. But when it's turned off, you can see that your camera will start slanting one way or the other. So that's something I, I appreciate it. I can understand it. And the thing is, quite honestly, if I had a working follow focus and a follow zoom on this camera, and I was imagining taking shots I actually am pretty mentally challenged already managing all the different modes and getting the shots and keeping an eye on the focus and other things. If I then had to do a follow focus as I'm moving away or zoom in and focus at the same time, I don't know whether I could do that many things in my brain at once. I don't know, love the idea, unless you have multiple people and a remote way to control the focus and the zoom by someone else. I personally don't think this works too well if you're just a one-man show and then obviously the fact that it's pretty hard to screw in if you have a big lens and a big camera and all of the screws kind of start locking and touching each other. So yeah, it's just something that didn't really work for me. Now, the other thing I struggled with a little bit is using the Xeon Play app and actually connecting it to the camera. Now, I was easily able to connect it to the camera via Wi-Fi, that's not a problem. And then with the little attachment that again, you can get as part of the creator pack or buy separately, to be honest, it's easy to mount your phone. But I had issues getting the image transmission to work and I'm not sure whether that was due to a dodgy HDMI cable. It sometimes seemed to work, it sometimes didn't. There's also a pretty specific sequence of things you need to do and set up depending on which camera you use. So make sure that you go onto the website, download the compatibility guide, check that your camera is supported and also exactly which steps you need to do. But again, because the camera is kind of set up really nicely, let me just turn this around just a little bit and this is where the joystick comes in really nice and handy. Um, because the screen sits above this top handle here, I can actually see the screen without the phone. The phone is nice and bright, especially if you're out in daylight and the LCD isn't too bright that you have on your camera. But again, you probably don't really need it. You can kind of get away with most of the basics.
And this very nicely leads me right into my recommendations. And that is that if you want to get the Xeon Crane 3 Lab, I would go for the basic package, quite honestly. I'd get the $899 version, although I'm not sure whether I'd go with maybe the Ronin S or the Moser 2 Air instead. The one thing you don't get with those gimbals is this handle. So if you do a lot of underslung work, like you want to get a lot of really low shots, you know, like where you're smooth on the ground, you're kind of lifting it up. I reckon that'll be easier with this particular device. I'm still going to get to use and try the Moza Air pretty soon. I'm quite excited about that. The Ronin S I personally haven't used, so I can't speak to that. But it is a good device. I'd get the basic package just because the creator package, while it does come with a monopod, which is pretty useful, and a strap and an additional quick mounting plate, things like the follow focus and follow zoom, I think they're good in theory. They're really useful in theory, but in, in practice, I just, I just didn't feel like I was ending up using them all that much. The one thing that you don't get with the basic package is just the phone holder, but you can actually buy these separately for about $49 on Amazon. So you don't need to get the full creator package or master package to get it. So I would recommend go with the basic package unless you do need some of the extra accessories. But again, this one's probably the more useful one, which you can buy separately anyway. But yes, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was useful. Hopefully I can do some videos for the Ronin S and the Moser Air and some of the other gimbals as well so I can get a bit more of a comparison going because I know that by itself a single gimbal review might not mean too much and you might have to look at a few other things just to figure out whether this could be right for you. Anyways, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to watch more, just click these links over on the right hand side. If you want to support me, what I do on this channel, be sure to check out all of the links down in the video description. And as always, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.